Chairs to decide if they want. Chairs. <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. We're all set. Okay. Um, we will call to order the uh, April tree board meeting. Um, all members are in attendance except for Terry, Jason, and Ken. Um, uh, introductions. Um, I think, Megan, did you mention David? Yeah. Everybody. So, David yep. will be um, chiming in uh, and talking about the data collection for the tree inventory project. So, um, we'll let David talk then. Um, we just need to anything, agenda review, anything anyone would like to add or um, any comments on the agenda for tonight? No. It's not like we have anything. So if you think of something along the way, we can add it then. Um, approval of the minutes for our March meeting. Um, I'll entertain a motion for approval of those minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes of whatever, March. I second it. Any uh, questions, comments, amendments? One, on the one, one comment, this is Tim. Uh, item four, first paragraph, uh, Ms. Hess's name, there's a typo. Hassan. Megan misspelled her own name? Yes. <laughs> Fixed. Fixed. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> we'll blame the peer reviewer on that. That's probably my fault. <laughs> I think I think that means you get donuts tomorrow, Megan. I think so. <laughs> All right. Any other questions, comments on the minutes for last month? And I have the mind, right? Okay, then we'll do, we need to do roll call vote on this. The motion is to approve the minutes. Um, Dave? Can I you hear me, Dave? So long. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Cindy? Yes. Pat, she's still there. We'll go back to her. Tim? Yes. Jessica? Dane, I wasn't able to be present. Okay, Jen. Yeah, same as Dane. So, Where's the chair? we need Pat to vote. Mm -hmm. she, she's right here. Does she approve the minutes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's, wired, I... she's getting wired up. All right, there's there's four. We're good. So I, I voted yes because I read the minutes and I said yes. To, but then Jen and Jessica didn't because they said they weren't there. So maybe I shouldn't have actually voted. Is that right or what? You can vote any way you want, Cindy. You're the co-chair. <laughs> Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll take that as a yes. <laughs> okay. So our first item for the uh, tree warden update is to um, toss it over to Megan to introduce our um, data collection team um, from the University of Maine. So Megan, go ahead and take it away. Yeah. So as you guys already know, we're going to be updating the tree inventory this year. Um, so I wanted to bring on um, David Ludwig, who is a master's forestry student, um, and he'll be primarily doing the data collection and orchestrating um, the inventory. I also wanted to have Tish Carr join as well. Um, she will be at, um, David's at, uh, mentor at UMaine. So um, David's just gonna go over a, a presentation and take any questions that we might have. Um, and I'll let him introduce himself. But I, David, you should be co-host. Let me know if you can share your screen or not. 
Okay, I think I'm able to. Um, if anyone has trouble hearing me, please let me know, but I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see it okay? Yep, I can. All right. Yep. Okay, I'll go ahead and jump into my slideshow. Um, once again, my name is David Ludwig. I'm a Master of Forestry student at the University of Maine. And for my Master of Forestry project, I will be updating the Town of Orono Urban Forest Inventory. Okay, okay there we go. Um, just a brief introduction of myself. Um, I have a Bachelor of Science in Environmental Policy from Cornell University. Um, I have experience with forestry, consulting, extension, and government work in New York, Oregon, California, and in Maine. Um, and as I said, I'm a current Master of Forestry student at the University of Maine. Um, I'd particularly like to highlight the fact that I do have some experience working for an urban forestry nonprofit in California, uh, specifically in Davis. And my goal is to apply the lessons learned and the enthusiasm that I gathered out there um, to our urban forest in the Northeast. Um, I think people in California recognize the tremendous benefit that urban forests provide, and they recognize just how much more livable um, and enjoyable they make our cities in addition to making them more sustainable. And I hope to share some of that enthusiasm with the Orono community as well. I'd also like to quickly mention uh, Tish Carr. She's going to be serving as my advisor and assisting with the design of this project. Um, she's on the call tonight as well. She has far too many qualifications just to list here, but she does have bachelor's degrees in wildlife management and forestry. She also has a Master of Forestry and a PhD in Ecology and Environmental Sciences. She has over 35 years of experience in arboriculture and community forestry. And she is also a current instructor of community forestry at the University of Maine. The goals of this project are to update the town of Orono urban forest inventory. The last time something like this was conducted was in 2002. Uh, the inventory focused specifically on the areas of the town east and south of US 95, or excuse me, Interstate 95, and over 3,000 trees were counted in that inventory. Uh, we anticipate we may count around 3,000 trees as well if we have the time and resources to make it to all of the areas that we would like to sample. Uh, we aim to identify and quantify the benefits that the urban forest provides a community. We hope to identify maintenance priorities and plan for the future and come up with um, needs and opportunities, for example, to address invasive species or to identify future sites for community tree planting events, uh, things of that nature. And as I said, we hope to share this information with the community and use it as an opportunity to promote interest in our urban forest. The scope of the project, as I stated, will focus on lands east and south of the 95. We're going to prioritize the urbanized core of the town um, we're going to be discussing more next week exactly uh, where our priorities will be. I understand we have a pretty detailed map that's being prepared that's going to show which lands we're going to start on to make sure we sample the highest priority areas first. Um, we plan to inventory trees within the town right of way, which is generally within 15 feet of a public road. And we also plan to inventory select town parks within the urbanized area as time allows. Our methods um, right now, we're kind of in the project design phase. Uh, we aim to begin collecting data in May and hopefully finish by September to make sure we get out there when the leaves are on the trees and they're easiest to identify and it's easiest to assess their condition. We plan to measure diameter, breast height, tree height, species, location, um, health, condition, and any maintenance needs that may be apparent to the sampler. We plan to collect data on smartphones using a program called iTree. There's no app to download for iTree. Users can enter data directly from a web browser on their smartphone uh, using credentials that we will send to them once they express their interest in the project. Um, I'd just like to show a few screenshots from iTree. Basically, it's an urban forest program that allows you to design your own sampling protocols. You can, uh, when we set it up, I'll be working with the town and with Tish to figure out exactly um, which options to select but you can choose tree species, DBH, location, crown size, crown health, light exposure, um, recommended maintenance, uh, conflicts with any utility lines, any pest issues. There's really quite a bit of data that can be selected here. 
Uh, our goal is to collect enough data to answer the management questions of the town without collecting so much that any one tree takes too long to inventory. We're trying to strike a balance. Uh, we, I plan to use iTree to assist in data analysis and analyze data from September through November. Uh, iTree uh, does a bunch of interesting analyses, um, which I'll show you in some subsequent slides, but that will be a great help and greatly streamline the process. The final product will include a current database of town trees and their locations, along with other vital information, including DBH height, species, and condition. The report will include options to help prioritize management in the near future, um, as I described earlier. And I anticipate completing this report in late November or early December of 2022 uh, in order to comply with the timeline for my graduation from the Master of Forestry program, in addition to the timeline put forward by the town. I just wanted to show a few examples of figures that iTree can generate for you. And it does this automatically once the data is input. Obviously, I'll be able to tweak it as needed, but um, it does a lot of this analysis very quickly uh, for you. These are from a sample report from a city in Massachusetts. It breaks down the urban forest by species, by DBH uh, size class, can identify potential pest impacts. It appears that in this sample report, um, it predicted that gypsy moth would be a major concern for the urban forest going forward. Um, here we might be more concerned about potentially emerald ash borer in the coming decade or two. Um, and on the right, you can also see that it quantifies ecosystem services. Here we can see that it quantifies carbon sequestration, but it can also quantify stormwater that's intercepted or heating and cooling costs that are saved based on the proximity of a tree canopy to a building. Uh, some of that's dependent on which data we decide to collect, but it's a very powerful tool and it can create a lot of very interesting reports and figures for us to help guide our management in the future and also increase community interest and investment. The personnel on the project, as I've stated, Tish Carr is my advisor. She will be assisting with project setup and design and will be helping me throughout the process as needed. I plan to also take a leading role in project design as well as data collection and analysis. I will collect some of the data myself Carly Fredericks is another University of Maine student. She'll be graduating in May uh, from the MF program. And she has also offered to assist us with data collection. Megan Hess is going to be the lead representative for the town who's going to be my day-to-day -day contact as issues and questions arise. I wanted to make everyone aware that we may need some additional volunteers to assist with data collection between May and September. I was hoping that any interested members of the tree board uh, would let us know of their interest and I'll have more uh, info on that in another slide in a moment. But we hope to have a training and orientation sometime in May, likely early May. I do have a question for the board, which uh, we can discuss now or I can circle back to at the end, but we plan to collect the following data in the field. Uh, species, diameter, breast height, tree height, location within the town, tree health, maintenance, pruning, and removal needs, if any of those are apparent to the sampler. Uh, we also would like to identify large potential planting sites. For example, if there's a tree, or excuse me, if there's a street that seems to have relatively few trees in the right of way, I might let Megan know about that and map it and make that a priority for a future planting event. Um, Megan expressed an interest in that sort of data. I'm wondering from the board, are there any other data that you would like to see collected? And when answering, please bear in mind that the above data will allow us to perform additional analyses such as screening for invasive pests that may be a problem in the future and quantifying ecosystem services. So I'll just open that up to the board real quick if anyone has anything that they would like to share. So this is Tim White. One of the screens that you had previously shown with the iTree application, it talked about uh, or, or had an item for uh, impinging on utilities. Is that part of the data that you'll be collecting with, with the maintenance pruning removal needs? Um, I believe so. Uh, you know, if it's obvious that a tree is growing under a power line and it's either needs to be pruned now or will clearly need to be pruned in the near future, uh, we'll be making a note of that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you talk more about the health and what, it seems like that could maybe be a couple of variables. What will you note in that section? Okay, 
I will be drawing from the methods of the previous inventory, but essentially they came up with a numerical scale that rates the tree from being in perfect health, having straight, um, even growth in the crown, having no obvious areas of dieback. And then there are different categories where you can note that there is crown dieback. You can note if there are forks you can note if there are mm -hmm. obvious areas that need to be removed uh, because they're unstable or because they may conflict with some level of human infrastructure. Um, I will, like I said, be drawing that from the scale that was created in the previous inventory. I don't have that in front of me right now, so I can't specifically state what each of those numbers corresponds with, but I could share that with the board uh, or I could ask Megan to distribute that to you all once we finish our meeting, if you'd like. I think it's probably worth reviewing that okay. um, health scale rating again, because it's been yes. a long time and just to make sure we're up to speed with the sort of current practices. Okay. Um, I have a meeting with Megan and Rob booked in next week. So that may be a good opportunity for us all to do that and make sure we're on the same page. And if it's all right with the board, we can share with you all the results of that meeting. Uh, would that be acceptable to everyone? What do you think, Rob? Yeah, good. that works. Um, I think uh, one of the things that, whether it be in the maintenance section or the health section, one or the other, you mentioned it, David, about the conflict trees. Some of those trees can be um, real maintenance issues and can cause hazards with property damage or damage to utilities and other parts of the infrastructure. So. I'd want yeah, to so, have an opportunity to make note of some of those trees if you did see them out there. We definitely will be flagging any obvious hazard trees. We're just going to be refining our criteria next time we meet to make sure that we're all on the same page. And like I said, I think we're trying to strike a balance between assessing tree health, but making sure we're not spending so much time on any given tree that we don't get much of an inventory done. So we're just trying to find a balance there. Um, if there are any other suggestions, please feel free to share. If not, I can move on. I had a, I just had a quick question about sure. the location and sure. using um, iTree. It's been a little while since I've used iTree, but it used to be a little bit clunky in terms of its um, meshing with geospatial data. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanted to, you know, just make sure that, you know, the data being collected is going to merge okay with the town of Orono's um, GIS yeah. system and that the data is going to be relatively easy to collect on a location basis. Yes. My understanding is that anyone with a relatively newer smartphone would be able to collect georeferenced data and that once that data is collected, we would be able to export it as a layer to um, ArcMap or ArcGIS. I don't know, Tish, if you have any additional information that you'd like to share on that. If Tish is on. Tish, I think you're muted. Okay, sorry. Um, I can. It, it actually. I was. I did this with one of my classes, and it and um, it is very easy to get a KLM file. The challenge you have is that um, we may not be able to use our phones because they may not be as accurate as uh, uh, GPS. So we have to figure out. That's where the the challenge comes in. It's not actually getting the KLM file. It's it's getting the getting the accuracy that we need. Um, so we may have to use, I mean, I'm going to talk with iTree again, but, um, it may be that we just have to use a GPS to make sure that we can get the accuracy that we need, or maybe there's some way, depending, like David said, newer phones might be more accurate, but we don't want to be 20 feet off or 40 feet off, which right at the moment on the layer that we have, that's what we're off. So, but as far as getting the data, it's really easy to download into uh, a GIS layer. It's not a big deal at all. Okay. 
So I think in summary, um, one way or the other, we will ensure that the data is accurately georeferenced um, and we'll also ensure that it's easy enough for any volunteers to have the equipment they need to collect the data, but we will refine that in the next few weeks. So unless there's any other questions, I think I'm going to move on, bearing in mind there'll be another chance for questions at the end. Okay. Thank you, David. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the next uh, question that I have is, are members of the board interested in helping? Um, if you are interested, uh, please know that we would provide an introductory session. We would provide an overview of our sampling protocols, uh, what we hope to have done. I think that at our first session, I would want to briefly sample some trees with people just to make sure we're all using the same approach and the methods are clear. Uh, and I think it would be relatively low commitment. Uh, if you're only able to help out a few times, that would be appreciated. If you wanna help out for the entire summer, if you've got the time and the interest, that would be great as well. Megan and I are going to be using maps to prioritize which areas of the town we'd like to sample first. So my hope for this is that once we get up and running, if someone is going to go out and sample on a given day, they could let me know and then I could tell them maybe what street or what block or what area I would like them to focus on on that day to make sure there's not any duplication of efforts and to make sure we get the areas that we're most interested in first. So if you are interested in helping, please email Rob, oh, excuse me, I advanced one slide too far. Please email Rob and let him know. And once we get a list of people, we will share information about a training and orientation session in the coming weeks. Uh, with that training likely to occur in May, we're going to shoot for early May, but uh, we can be flexible as people's schedules allow. We can meet on a, a weekday or a weekend, so whatever works for people. So we can figure that out once we get a list of people who are interested and they share their availability with us. And with that, that is all I have for the presentation. Were there any additional questions that did not get answered earlier that you have for me? Okay, hearing none, I will turn it back over to Megan. All right, so I'll ask you to stop sharing your screen, David. Okay. But thank you so much. That was great. It was a good overview to see what some of the deliverables will look like and, and the data that will be collected. All right. Thank you. And like I said, we can revise the exact metrics, or I should say review the metrics we're going to be using and send that out to the board once we get that finalized. Yeah, that sounds great. Rob, thank you. you. Yeah, I think that sounds great. It's uh, kind of exciting to finally be at this point. It's been 20 years since we did the last one, so this one's yeah. definitely ready to go and it sounds like David and Tisha really got a, a well put together plan so um, we'll be meeting like I said meeting next week to kind of iron out some of the finer details and uh, we'll keep the board up to date um, anyone that wants to volunteer to do collection um, as David said just let me know and we'll make sure you get involved with the orientation meeting all right thank you everyone yeah, thank you Right. Thank you, David and Tish. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank Look you. forward to working with you. Thanks to you as well. All right, moving on. I just um, wanted to give the board an update on the Bennett Road project. Uh, that was completed on the 18th. Uh, Zulke Tree Service did a nice job for us there. Um, we actually in review, we decided to leave a few of the dead standing trees for habitat trees. Um, a few kind of decisions like that, I think really made things uh, work out well. Um, we didn't really have to cut very many of the healthy trees off the slope. Um, so the, I'm not too concerned about, I, was, I originally was a little concerned about destabilizing the slope um, but I think uh, that's going to be fine too. So um, overall, it, it came out really well. Did anybody have any questions about that project? Or? Did you have any? No, no. Did you have any poles that were being held up by trees? <laughs> Just the one that I told you about back in January, and turns out we were right, and uh, that pole actually got replaced yesterday. So, okay. yep. <laughs> Um, 
no questions about the apple tree that I saved on the slope by the. <laughs> I made him leave it, but I don't know that it's going to do much. But uh, it's an it's an interesting story, anyways. Now, huh. um, but anyway, yeah, the project came out well and um, is complete. So, um, any questions on that one? Okay. Uh, well the next done. Is thank, thank you. The, the job was well done. Thanks. Yes, James did a nice job. Yep. Um, the next is an update from Megan on a grant application that we submitted in between our last meeting and now um, regarding uh, planning for invasive plants. So would you just give the board an update on that, Megan? Yeah, so we sent in an application. Um, to the Invasive Plant Management Program, which is run by the Maine Forest Service. Um, the concept is that you use a eligible plan preparer. So someone that has a license to, to make these, these invasive plans for a municipality. Um, and they create an invasive plant control practice plan, um, which then if you submit that to the Maine Forest Service, you get reimbursed 50% for making the plan. Um, so we reached out to Hunter Manley of Old Town, um, and he was willing to create this plan for us. Um, Rob and I were kind of talking, and since we weren't completely familiar with this program, we decided um, that we would start with the Colburn lot. So it has to be over 10 acres of land for them uh, to count to be acceptable to create this plan for. Um, so we decided to focus on the Colburn lot that we know has invasive buckthorn um, from the previous uh, Woods, -wide, Woods Wise plan that was completed in 2016. Um, and so we haven't heard back from them yet to see if our plan was kind of accepted or not, but I'll be free to be sure to keep you updated on that. Are there any questions about that uh, project? thought is that we can hopefully, um, once we get the Colburn lot plan done, learn from that and maybe that will help us expand the reach of the plan to other locations around town. Yeah, you could apply for a, a continuous parcel. So that's why we decided on the Colburn lot first. And, you know, like Rob said, can always apply again next year. It sounds like it's a re recurring program. Questions on that? So since our last meeting, um, I had no less than 12 locations brought to my attention um, through various, um, this spring technically is a busy time for uh, tree evaluations. So I provided you all a list. I'm not, did everyone get a chance to take a look at that? Um, mm -hmm. Some of the things on the list I looked at and thought, well, they're not, they're clearly not immediate hazards, could have potential um, uh, health issues, but I thought it would be fair to wait till they leaved out to get a better understanding of what the health of the tree was. Um, some of the locations are um, pretty clear that they're, they're just dead trees. Um, some of them, uh, need your evaluation, I'll be looking forward to your review. Um, I, I included notes for each of the locations. Um, some of them are pretty straightforward, like uh, the trees out on Essex Street, which I misspelled. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the locust on Penobscot Street, the one by the driveway of the um, water district, I'd be interested to see what your opinions are on that tree. It's got some pretty significant um, weakness at the base that um, I'm a little concerned about. Um, and then there's a group of locusts that I marked with some ribbon uh, a little bit further down that are in various stages of failure. Looks like one got struck by lightning, I think. Um, there's some things like that there. So um, just an opportunity to take a look at some of those locusts on Penobscot Street. Um, 170 Bennett Road is kind of straightforward. That's in a in the drainage ditch right on the town line. It's set way back from the road. 
it is dead, but it, it's a relatively low hazard. I think it's going to fall into the ditch if it falls anywhere. I'll definitely need to address it at some point. So I thought um, I'd have you all look at it and, and we'll go from there on that one. Um, the first location on Park Street, the Pines at 157, um, it's a twin pine tree and one of the main leaders is dead and the other one isn't yet, but they're connected at the base. So I'm thinking probably the whole tree should come down, but um, I look forward to review on that one. Um, the other area of review is kind of right across from Washburn Place. There's a large stand of pines there that I've been watching over the years. Um, and some of them are showing signs of kind of decline. Um, I don't think that any of them necessarily need to be removed immediately. But I thought going into this summer, this would be a good chance for you all to take a look at them and sort of get a baseline on where we're at with those. There may be some that uh, could qualify for removal in the near future. Um, Westwood Drive. So there's a dead pine at the end of the street that will need to come down. Um, we have a sewer project on that road anyway, so I'll probably loop that right into that if anyone has any objections about that pine tree coming down, please let me know. Um, the Westwood Drive is, is more of a, so once you get past the high school, the back entrance to the high school, toward the um, high school lot trailhead, on the high school side, on the right side of the road heading out, there's a number of trees that um, appear to be or look hazardous in the way they've leaned out into the road. Um, and I'm wondering if maybe we should put together a clearing project for that segment of road. Um, I'm really interested in what your opinions are on what should be, the, the trick is some of the trees that are kind of leaning out that look a little dangerous or, um, you know, relatively good sized oak that don't seem to be unhealthy. They're just sort of perched in a really precarious manner. So. Um, I'd be interested in your opinions on that, whether we should just kind of wait, wait that out or, or put together a project to do a, a roadside clearing of that area. The, the trees are very close to the side of the road. Um, so uh, yeah, that, that was more of a, an opinion from the board than anything else. I, I feel like I would like to put a project together to do some clearing, kind of like what we did on Benick Road, but um, Again, I, I just kind of was looking for your opinion on that. Um, the corner of Spencer and uh, Maine, I think they're hemlock. There's three dead softwoods there on the corner that need to come down. Um, 38 Pierce Street is a, is a maple that's got some pretty good, there's some dead limbs in the crown and um, it's very close to the wires in the house. The homeowner, I think, would prefer to prune. So um, if you guys think that's an option, uh, then, I mean, I think we could go that route. I think it's a relatively straight standing tree, just really close to the house. So I, I get anxious about those ones. Um, it is in the right of way, but it's, uh, um, you know, kind of perched out over the house. So we'd want to prune some of that back anyway. So. I'm just, this could be one of those where if we do a pretty significant amount of pruning. I'm not sure what will be left. So um, it's something to take in, into consideration when looking at that one. Uh, the end of Gilbert Street, uh, there's a poplar that looks unhealthy, um, but when you look up, it's got a big scar on the side that's relatively old by the looks of it. Um, the neighbor across the street was concerned because they saw the scar, but I'm not sure that the tree is all that unhealthy. So um, that one may be just something to perhaps put on our monitor list. Um, it kind of looked by the way the, the buds on the limbs were that it might leaf out relatively well. So that may be more of one just to watch than necessarily take down. I think it where the scar is, I didn't see a ton of significant rot, like there's not holes in the trunk or anything like that. 
it seems relatively solid. So maybe just one to watch other than besides than to necessarily take down. Um, and then at 35 Broadway, there's a very large uh, maple that is leaning right out over the road and it's big and um, sort of leans toward the neighbor's house. So there's been, I think there's been some conversation there about it. Um, it's, it's, you know how Norways will kind of grow together and, and it's, and it leans out. So there's like this split in between the two main leaders of the tree. The larger of the two is the one in the back. So it, it looks like it's just leaning over it. It, it looks a little scary. Um, the tree in general looks pretty healthy though. So I guess I'm looking for an opinion there. The other thing about this tree is that I'm not confident it's in the right of way. And I'll be doing some, uh, I'll be taking some measurements to verify that, but either way, we can take a look at it and evaluate it, and either give recommendations to the homeowner or um, recommendations to me if we uh, decide to do something with it, some kind of management with it. So that's the 12 locations. Um, I was hoping that we could uh, take, take action on them at the next meeting in May. So it gives you a month to kind of review them. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Bob, this is Tim. There was a form and I can't remember um, if it was Jessica that had it. Um, it was, was Jennifer. It a, Jennifer, thank you. Jennifer had an a evaluation form and I didn't know if we wanted to uh, adopt that or adopt some kind of a simple um, tally sheet for us to record the information. The, the document that you put together is very, very helpful. The, the address, the description of it, your concerns, and also the indication that you want uh, the tree board's review is uh, helpful. But again, to, to make it a little bit easier uh, to, to track essentially all the trees that we're gonna be looking at this year, um, we get the spring flurry, we get a few in the summer, and then usually we get some in the fall, so. And Jessica, I looked yeah. for that form and I, I couldn't find it quick enough, so otherwise I would. I think we put it in the, in the um, shared folder, maybe under evaluations. Yeah, I think it's yeah. out there, but I'd be happy to email it out to, to everyone again. I did. I did want to revise it a little bit to make sure it was consistent with the tree inventory um, health ratings. Um, so I'll do that and send it out again. I, if you can't find it, I do have the one for 82 main, so I can send it back to you if you need that, but I do have yeah, it. I, I, I did just find it. It's, it's, it is in the, um, It is in that folder. Thanks, Rob. And John, I'm happy to um, help you if you want to revisit, uh, rework that form at all. If there's comments that you want to give me or anything like that, I'm happy to you know make it however however you need it to be. Just like okay, that. sounds good. And we should we'll just keep that in mind too as um David um, is updating the tree inventory data collection tool. We'll just. If we're going to use a form, we'll just try to make sure that we're consistent. Yeah, Megan and I have talked about creating some kind of standard form for us to use that would be easy, and um, Megan could compile them and uh, keep them all to organize in the drive. So um, there's a workbook from uh, ancient times in 2017 of trees and it's in the root folder. I'm not going to move it. I'll let you uh, take care of it, Megan or, or Rob. Um, it was just a, well, Excel or uh, Google Sheets. That was just a simple format to capture the information. I think capturing more information is is better. Um, I'm uh, you know, getting 12 trees and having to write up 12 three page descriptions of the trees. Um, may be a little bit cumbersome, but generally we don't get that many. 
Um, and again, once we get the inventory updated, uh, we'll certainly have most of that information and we'll be able to pull it out uh, much quicker. So really, this is almost an interim step. Right. Okay, if anyone um, during the course of the month has questions when they're on site or whatever, just uh, reach out to me or Megan and we'll try to help you out as best we can. Rob, can I potentially add a tree to that list? Um, yep. The, the beautification committee last fall asked me about it and I forgot about it and they reminded me. <laughs> um, it's the Pat's Park tree, the one that's at the corner of is that Mill Street in Maine and that yeah. tiny little thing? Um, and they th think it's in um, pretty bad shape. And I, ha I haven't, um, I don't know, I pass it nearly every day and always forget to look at it. Um, we did look at it a few years ago. So it's good to continue to monitor that. And they've okay. remained concerned about that tree. Okay. I think for sure, well, the downfall for that tree was um, years ago, somebody strung Christmas lights in it and left them for years. And so a lot of the, the limbs were kind of choked out by the wires on the Christmas lights. So uh, before my time, so I'm like, <laughs> but that was, that's the issue. So it may, I'd always thought it probably could use a relatively aggressive prune for sure. And then um, see what happens. But yes, we can, I'll add that to the, to the list. And, and if it, uh, if we think it just needs a prune, and I guess this is a general question, um, is that something that tree board members if we're comfortable can do, or do you refer it to the tree service or, or do we just well, decide on a case by case? Yeah, I mean, you guys can take that on if that's something you want to do. I know that um, that tree's a little bigger than it looks from the street. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, you, you'd need a pretty good sized ladder to get up there or, or a long pole saw to do some of it which is why I considered uh, giving it to my contractor, but um, we can make that decision next month if that's what you'd like. Okay. Uh, any other questions on the uh, evaluation? All right, then we'll move on to uh, planning for Arbor Day. So um, who wants to take that conversation off? We have the um, Arbor Day celebration that we normally do with the students. Cindy, usually take that lead, so. We usually do that on the Thursday of, the, of Arbor Week. Um, and that's fine, I could call Patrick, I will not be available um, at all that week. Our kids are coming home from California. We haven't seen them for two whole years and a little granddaughter that's four, almost four. So um, I probably won't be available for anything that week, but I'd be willing to get a hold of Patrick and see what day works for him. Usually it's that Thursday. I don't have a calendar right in front of me, so I don't know what that date is. Um, and I'm nice. not sure anyone has heard from Jan uh, from Augusta about getting trees or anything like that. Um, I don't know that we've had any messages from her about um, Tree City events or anything. Pat, have you heard from her? Maybe Pat's not there. But anyway, I can get that far with it. I'm not sure who would be available and what, what day would work for for tree board members um, that week. Is anybody available that week? I mean, we could do it another week if 
if people aren't available, but. So Arbor Day is April 29th and So you're thinking the 28th, which would be Thursday? Yeah, I think it's the, let me, let me look at it. But that. it's the main Arbor week, right? That we do it? Oh. Okay. Yes. Yeah, we're a little bit off. Uh, so it's, it's May well, 20th. May 20th is the Friday. We're planning to do the um, Godfrey Drive buffer strip planting event that, um, Megan's lined up with the grant. Um, so right. Thursday the 19th. Yeah, that's that's the week, yep. Week of the 15th. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess that what I guess that would be what the 19th would be that Thursday. Yes. That okay. is far enough out that I am available. Yeah, me too. Okay. Me, me three. Oh, great. Great. So, um, and whether or not we can probably meet with the kids this year outside and whatever, like we did before. <clears throat> so I'll check with Patrick about it and then let you know. Thank you. Okay. And we'll see about getting some little saplings for the kids, little, little ones, little trees. Okay, I'll check on that. The, the other, I, I guess, uh, according to the minutes from the last meeting, um, Jason mentioned something about educational flyers and getting some information out about Arbor Week, but I'm not sure what the idea was to um, make some plans on that in that line. You know, I kind of was thinking it would be appropriate to, that's why I put education outreach there. So it'd be appropriate to put together some kind of a, almost like an article sort of chronicling what um, the history of the Orono Tree Board. We've just gone, you know, um, with our uh, 26th year as a tree city. So um, there's a lot to talk about there. I just, we would need somebody to help Megan author that. Hmm. Well, we could I, could, I could see if I can help her out with something like that. But we want to get that out pretty soon, right? Rob, were you thinking that for the owner observer, or where did you want to? Well, it could it could be in the the next observer, but I I want it ready for um, that week. I would think we we could issue a press release with that attached um, early, you know, on Monday that of that week, and um, more Friday of the week before. You you don't need it. You don't want it too far out, um, and that would generate some interest from some news outlets, and maybe get a little bit of coverage of our planning event on that Friday. So. Hmm. It would just need to be relatively concise, you know, a couple paragraphs about um, where the tree board's been and where it's headed. I'm happy to get a good draft of that going. And then if anybody wants to look over it and make sure, just because I okay. have to for the history of it. Sure. That sounds good. You can do it as a Google Doc and share with everybody. Give us a deadline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that would be helpful. I would appreciate you breaking the white space. And getting the getting some ink spilled on the page first, and then and I agree, yeah. Google Docs is easy to edit. I'll I'll do it right in the tree board folder. That's fine. Thank okay. you. So that, I'll send out an email when the first draft's done. How's that? That's very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. I think in the, a few months ago, we talked about having our 25th year celebration. We put it off last year because of the COVID thing. And I don't know if we want to pick that up again and do that sometime soon. I think we did talk about doing that during Arbor Week. Um, we don't have Kenny here. Kenny really was into that one. 
in uh, Jason tonight. So, so we can nominate them. Yeah, if you don't show up. <laughs> They're on the committee. <laughs> oh, the other the other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I I wanted to re up because my three years was up, and uh, so I needed to um, let the town know if I wanted to continue to be on the tree board, and I would love to still be on the tree board, and I've contacted Nancy about that, but. Um, but I'd be willing to be an alternate if somebody, you know, one of the two men that are alternates would like to be a, an actual member. So that's something to think about, I guess. So. I had that on the chairperson update. So um, we can move on with that. Uh, Megan will, um, the, the 25th anniversary, did we, were we talking about doing that in the fall maybe to make sure that we could actually gather? Okay. But I, I, that's where I thought we were with that. But if we want to try to put something together for May, we can start the ball rolling. I guess that's up to you all. It doesn't matter to me as far as necessarily having it during Arbor Week. I think some we had mentioned it back long, but I I won't be available that week. So okay. Sorry, that's maybe um, around. we get so, through that, Arbor Week and start talking about plans for because usually July and August can be a little slow for the board. So maybe that would be a good time to put it together. Yeah. yeah, that might be. That sounds pretty good. That's going to be a busy week if uh, we do get together with the fifth graders that week and then the next day you have that project over on um, over by the tech park. Yes, and all the TV interviews Megan is going to have to do. <laughs> you get a you get a donut for every one, Megan. Just saying. <laughs> Don't let them forget, Tim. Oh, oh, that's remember this is recorded, yeah. so you can go back into the recording and he's agreed to it. <laughs> <laughs> so um Cindy started talking about it. One of the things that we always do in May is elect the uh, officers for the board. So um I'll need to review terms. Cindy's is up, and I'm not sure if anybody else's is, but I'll have to look at that. But this is one thing that I don't chime in on. So you guys are going to have to hash this out on your own <laughs> um, in terms of how you want to handle membership and and um, particularly who's who you'd like to be your chairperson or persons um, is 100% up to you. So. I'll let you guys hash that out on your own. But we will talk about it. We have to vote in May, so. Okay. How are our current chair people feeling about continuing or being done? <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'd be fine to step away from that position and still be a part of the activities and and uh, what we're doing in town and in the garden and all of that. But um, I've certainly enjoyed working with Dave and everyone else. It's been a fun time and a uh, busy time. Some, some parts of the year are really busy, but um, I certainly would be happy to have um, Kenny or Jason step up and be be an actual member and I could step back a little bit and still still be a part of what's going on. So if we can we can wait till next month we're gonna we'll decide on things next month I guess. Well it's so Dave you're our other co-chair are you interested in remaining as a co-chair? 
Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, you could, I guess you couldn't hear me before. Something was, wasn't working yeah. right. <laughs> we had our earphones on and the microphone, but apparently we were talking to ourselves. <laughs> so, you know, as long as my health stays halfway decent, I, I'm willing to stay on and work with somebody else as a, as a co-chair. Uh, maybe for another year and then, then I can step down. I think we would appreciate if you would uh, be able to stay on because that would give us a good overlap with um, Cindy if she wants to step back again, staying active and supporting somebody coming on. Um, but that means that we would be looking for a co-chair. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, and, and Rob, I'm, I've kind of got an eye towards you of uh, how do we bring um, one of the alternates on as a full-time member, how does that get decided? And, and without pulling out all the paperwork and reading it now, that would be a question that I would have. And then to identify if there's somebody among the, the folks that come up, you know, the person that comes up as a full-time member and... Um... So we, um, looking at the board membership, um, there are three people, Tim, Cindy, and Jessica, who are coming to the end of their three-year term. Um, if you wish to stay on the board, um, then the seat is yours. Um, so you just need to tell me that you want to continue membership and you'll get, that would continue for a, a third, you get another three years um, for that. And, and I've expressed that I did get a, the letter from uh, the town and uh, returned uh, acceptance for another three-year term. Thank you for. Did you get a letter too, Jessica? Okay. I did, and I'm actually still trying to decide. So I'm, I took a new position in January that has constrained my time more than I thought. And so I don't know yet exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> It's not yes and it's not no. And I yep. feel like I have another month that maybe maybe I will magically feel like I have more time or something. Um, so I do, I am very interested in the alternates and if they want to like, kind of like Cindy, if, if they're really eager, um, then maybe yeah. it could be alternate or rolling completely off the board if, if they're up for it. But I also don't wanna leave the board stranded without anyone. So, um, so I apologize for not having a clear answer at this point. Okay, you don't need one. Um, the, the beauty of having the associate members is if they um, would like to move into a full seat, then that makes that person, that transition easy. And if you're willing to stay on as a, an associate member, we can just basically flip flop, which is perfectly fine. Um, and then um, we would make those recommend, we would make a formal, in May, we'd make a formal recommendation to the town council um, for them to approve at the May council meeting. Well, how about, um, I would like to nominate Tim as the, not, the sole nominating committee and have him send an email to the tree board to kind of gather everybody's um, and then, and then there'll be the chess game. I can think of no one better than Tim White to play the chess game of associates moving to full and fulls I, moving I, to associates and chair people. And I can't hear you. I, I, hello, is this thing on? <laughs> I I I'm, could I could I could certainly help help with that. Um, and. Just taking now. Now you're making me take notes, which is a terrible thing. I thought I put my pencil down for the evening. Um, I think it's as simple as here's the full members, here's the associates, and um, how's how's everyone doing? Yeah. Then we can have an email discussion. I'll I'll ask the impertinent question, um, Jennifer. Are you interested in a co-chair role? And, and th need to think about it as a quite a uh, valid option, but if it's a hard no at this point, then it means I'm gonna be buying somebody some donuts or coffee. 
I was laughing because I was going to ask you the same thing. <laughs> um, Arm wrestle you. <laughs> yeah. We'll duke it out. <laughs> it's not a hard no for me, but um, I'd, I'd vote for Tim. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Well, I think I'll be spending some time with uh, Cindy and Dave to make sure I understand and make sure that we can put together a good job description for you. Ha, huh. see how I slid that in there? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> now, I would just say I'd kind of like to tweak a few things with that job description as we roll forward. So um, as the board grows, I think the role of the chair can grow too. So um, some of those things I'd like to talk about a little bit as we move forward, but. Mm -hmm. um, well, that, that may be one of the things, Rob, is I'll reach out to you and we can, again, we can put together some thoughts as far as um, how, it, how it scopes out. That's, that's one of the things I, I don't want to accept something that uh, I don't fully understand the role for. And I think that Cindy and Dave have done such an excellent job that they make it look easy. But you know, that's a true sign of, of a craftsperson is that they, they make it look easy and you don't see the, the expertise that goes into making it look easy. And- uh, Probably because we're getting old. <laughs> older, I, Dave, not old, older. Oh, yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna say, say, not you're, yet, that's you're, next year. <laughs> yeah, you're always me, a year away. Let me tell you how I got to be involved in all this. <laughs> when, I, when I retired, I made a big mistake. I went into the town office and volunteered to do whatever. And so I got stuck on tree board and uh, planning board and OEDC. trail committee. And lo and behold, uh, um, the lady that was the chair of the tree board moved to Oregon. And nobody wanted to take it on. So I said, well, it's not, instead of seeing it disappear, I'll, I'll do it in the interim. And the interim turned out to be to this day. <laughs> so it's been 20 years. So I, I, I'm willing to stay on, but. Uh, and look who got the Bleezes involved in the tree board and the, <laughs> and the, and the trail committee, Dave. <laughs> Poor old people that moved trees and took trips and went to information meetings. <laughs> well, it's been a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun and it isn't terribly hard work, I don't think. Um, some of it is. Some of it is. By getting 50 three trees from the, the uh, tree company down in Morrill and bringing them back one fall and getting them all planted by the 1st of November. That was a lot of work, <laughs> but we did it and we had a good time. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I, I would still be willing to stay on the board as an active member, but I just thought it would be good to give our associate members an opportunity to you know get their feet wet as so to speak i mean they've got their feet wet they're very involved in trees and all of that business um give kenny and jason a chance to one or the other or whatever whatever how it ever works out um. all right so tim you're gonna kind of orchestrate that whole thing and we'll revisit yes. it that will be our starting point in, in May. Um, we'll elect the new co-chairs and move forward from there. So, okay. So I'll I'll ask, um, and you may not be able to answer, but Rob, I'll, I will circle back with you to understand as far as like what's considered public record among us talking about all of this and exchanging emails, and does a copy have to go to you? And yeah, I mean, that's a good rule of thumb. If you're going to be talking about tree board business, you should be copying the whole board on it. Okay, very good. That, yeah. That's what I was figuring. I just wanted to make sure if there was a, another address that needed to be included or another step to, to follow. So thank you. All right, um, anything on the... 
Uh, chairperson update, anything else to add that we haven't talked about yet? I don't think I have anything. I don't know if Dave does or not. I don't, I don't believe I did. If anybody else does. I don't have anything to add, except that somebody really wants to take my place. That's okay. <laughs> Pat, you itching for it? <laughs> I won't have to type all those things. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we'll have that discussion next month. Um, okay. So our next meeting is Tuesday, May 3rd. Um, the question is, do we want to continue with our remote meetings or try to get back in person? That's, and that's either way is fine with me. Just wanted to throw that out there. I would say that why don't we wait and see how the COVID situation if it doesn't really flare up, then I would I would prefer to meet in person, you know, where we can spread out six feet apart and wear a mask and so on. Especially if we're going to, you know, have going back, kind of conversations going back and forth about co-chairs and who's on the board and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dave, is that saying your preference is to be masked, even if like the town office doesn't require it? I think the masking is, is up to individuals. If the person wants to put it on, well, that's fine. They don't, I, you're right, they don't have to wear it now, at this point anyway. Right, the current policy in the town office is that it's masking is optional. I'm probably going to jinx us into another snowstorm, but it's possible that we could meet like at picnic tables. Um, outside if it's nice. I'm in favor of outside. I'm in favor of in person. I will mask if everyone would prefer me to. I have a hard time hearing people when they're masked if I don't get to look yeah, at I their do. lips. I do well, too. We, we could meet at the uh, wildlife garden. Mm -hmm. It's outside between the two schools. Well, That's we don't have any, unless we brought chairs, we don't have any seats up there yet. I have camp chairs. I, I can set up, I can set that up if that's what you want to do. Okay. So we could plan to meet at the wildlife garden. Um, and then if the weather's poor, we could just plan B can be the town, town hall. Okay. Good. Sounds good. I like that because if we're going to do something with the students, it would help us identify a doable project. And if there's something that we wanted to highlight and, and as we were walking around, we wanted to create a sign or something, um, that would be a good time for us to look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So our next meeting will be um, fair weather. We'll be at the Children's Garden at five o'clock. And if it's raining, we'll meet in the town hall. Or okay. snowing. Because Jennifer's uh, May 3rd. <laughs> yeah. If it's snowing, I'm going to retire. It eight, if it snows eight, on May 3rd, I'm going to retire. Eight, 18, <laughs> was it 18, 18 or 18, 16? It snowed every month of the year due to a volcano someplace. So, the year with no could, summer. Could happen, man. Could happen. <laughs> hope not okay uh, anybody got anything else they want to talk about I think it's close to supper time <laughs> maybe we need to adjourn well I think Step that was in. Dave making it there you go all in favor I am you betcha all right have a great month everyone Thank you thank very you. much. Thanks, Megan, everyone. thank you for all your Everybody. support. Yeah, yeah thanks, Bye. Megan. Bye.